So of course, in the U.S. market, compact SUVs are becoming basically the new standard bearer for the family. Um, you know, increasingly repla replacing midsize sedans. Um, so it's becoming very, very important to know what new vehicles are coming out in this segment because it is a very, very competitive segment. So with that said, we have a video here with the top five uh, new compact SUVs which are coming out this year. All right, so the first place we have to start has got to be the RAV4 Prime. Um, for those of you who don't know, you probably can tell <laughs> actually by how many of them are out on the road, but the RAV4 is the number one seller in the compact SUV segment. And uh, when they introduce a new model, it's definitely a big deal. And uh, so with this new RAV4 Prime, this is going to be a plug-in electric vehicle. So this is the first version of that, obviously, for the RAV4. And it also is going to be the highest performance RAV4. So it's going to be yeah. certainly a very appealing and interesting combination. Now, Toyota has already put out some of the specifications. So I'll read them off to you. But what we should be looking at is 302 horsepower. And they're citing a 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Yeah. So um, it's like almost like a performance RAV4. Yeah. So for those of you that were complaining about, you know, the four cylinder engine and not a V6 option, this is going to be your option for that. Um, it is the plug in electric type, but it's still going to have a lot of performance to back it up. And to be honest with you, we looked at it at the Chicago Auto Show in person and, you know, it actually looks really good on the outside as well. Mm -hmm, that's right. There are certainly some styling changes. I mean, nothing super dramatic. It will still be a RAV4. Um, but there are some styling differences, both the front, rear, and side. And then, of course, the other thing is that you have unique trim levels coming. Uh, it will be the only model to have an SE trim level, uh, and it will also have an XSE trim level. So, uh, you know, you'll have plenty of really stylish choices to choose between. Now, this RAV4 Prime will have actually 38 miles of full electric potential. So if you have a, a really short commute to work or not, you know, you might actually be able to just do completely electric which mm -hmm. is kind of cool um, and as far as like the MPGE uh, it's gonna be rated at 90 MPGE uh, for those of you that are interested in that figure and it's supposed to come on sale this summer um, and pricing has not really been released on this model yet right. obviously it's going to be the most expensive yeah. <laughs> version but you're also getting a lot there with all the enhancements in both performance and the maximal efficiency now for the second product we want to speak about, that's got to be the Bronco Sport. That's getting a lot of attention recently with the uh, whole leaks uh, yeah. <laughs> with the regular Bronco as well as the Bronco yeah. Sport. Um, but we've really been able to see this in a lot of detail. Basically it leaves very little to the imagination. You can just see the actual product. Basically it's going to have, of course, a mini Bronco kind of vibe. Um, which, as we can see, is going to be kind of squared yeah. off, kind of rugged. Um, I guess you can think of it kind of like the Jeep Renegade. Um, so, uh, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna be small, but still have kind yeah. of that rugged character to it. Now, foundationally, it is going to be related to the Ford Escape. Um, this is basically the second part of Ford's new strategy in this segment. Um, with the Escape, they went with that more urban yeah. design. It got kind of smoothed out, um, you know, it looks very urban. Um, and then for the Bronco Sport, that's gonna be part two for the person who wants something that looks more rugged, more squared off, um, you know. So basically you'll have kind of a one-two punch from Ford in this segment. That does mean it's gonna share the same, uh, you know, like I said, foundation, also the mechanical bits. Um, so we have seen that it's going to start off with the three-cylinder engine from the Escape. Uh, we'll also have an eight-speed automatic transmission. So definitely, I think overall, this is the Bronco Sport is going to be designed to have a little bit more character, be a little bit more yeah. exciting than the Ford Escape. I think that's definitely a good thing because based on a lot of your guys' comments about the Ford Escape, a lot of you guys probably aren't a huge fan of the styling, so this kind of gives you that other option in the Ford lineup. That's right. Um, on sale date is going to be later this year and um, pricing has not been announced but I would expect it to be in the ballpark of the Ford Escape. Like I said, they're kind of a pair.
Now, of course, it wouldn't be a video if we didn't talk about the all-new Nissan Rogue. Um, now, obviously, the Rogue has been out for quite a long time at this point, so it's very exciting at uh, the prospect of a new one. Um, and we don't have a lot of intel about this Rogue because we're not exactly sure when it's going to come out or anything. But what we do know is that it's going to have a two-part headlight design as well as a lot more bold uh, styling than the current model, uh, which I think a lot of you guys will definitely appreciate. That's right. That's the way the segment has been moving towards. It's just more in exciting designs. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll see something. And based on the renderings, it looks like we will see something that, you know, has the style to kind of go head to head with the latest offerings out there. We do also have one spied interior shot. Um, obviously, we don't know exactly what trim level this is or anything like that, but you can tell from this the interior design looks a lot more upscale as we're kind of expecting, you know, based on what we've seen with recent Nissans like the Altima and the Sentra. Things have been moving a lot yeah. more upscale. Their interior designs and exterior designs as well are just getting, uh, you know, a lot more expressive, a lot more premium. Um, and inside of this, you can clearly see there is going to be a uh, large screen um, as well as an electronic shifter. And with all that's going on these days, who knows exactly when it will yeah. debut. Um, but it is expected to be on sale in the fall regardless. Now next up we have the new Hyundai Tucson. Uh, I'll just go ahead and preface this by saying that we really don't have a lot of information about this new Tucson. Yeah, Hyundai seems to be a little yeah. better about keeping their secrets. Um, <laughs> than Ford, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it could be uh, the uh, that top secret proving grounds yeah. that we went to. They have yeah. a lot of security they do. there and they definitely keep things uh, well hidden. Um, but, you know, uh, we do have still have some renderings and some hints and some stuff that you can see. Um, the big thing is going to be, again, just like the Nissan Rogue, is this move into an expressive design, being bold and standing out from the competition. As a matter of fact, the company's design vice president has said, quote, people will freak out about the design when they see it. So, um, <laughs> that, that, sounds, that sounds exciting. I mean, it does. I, I really hope what he means by that is that it's going to look good. Because um, some of Hyundai's designs have been a little controversial. The uh, 2019 Elantra, I, I did personally didn't like it. So hopefully that means that it's going to be a new, mm -hmm. you know, kind of frontier for them that really looks good. As far as the renders and spy shots, really the most that we can make out um, is kind of LED headlights and tail lights which are expected um, but you can kind of see that the grill has a nexo ish shape to it yeah. Um, so yeah it's definitely going to be bigger and it's going to be bolder the really exciting thing though is that we're talking about possibly being an in version yeah, well, so there yeah. might be a performance version of this which that will be pretty cool um, and there's almost certainly going to be a hybrid version as well yeah um, and then this, once again, just like the Rogue, is expected to be on sale uh, later this year. And wrapping us up here, I do want to talk about the, the, the refreshed Equinox and Terrain. Um, for those of you that follow the channel, you actually saw the uh, refreshed Equinox. It was at the Chicago Auto Show. We did a first look on it. Um, but, you know, they are making quite a few changes, actually, for the refresh. We were surprised by it, and it does look a lot better, as well as added a new trim level um, to the Equinox to make it have a more value-oriented look. And, of course, besides for the cosmetic changes, um, you do have the new trim level RS. Um, that's yeah. definitely going to be, uh, you know, a really nice addition. Uh, quad exhaust pipes, you know. Some really cool touches that it make the make it more stylish yeah. because it was always a little on the blander side of things. And I think if I'm not mistaken, they did say that that was going to be, not be like the top end model. So it it's going to be a kind of a middle price point to get good styling as well as have a good price as that's, well. That's right. Um, and additionally, wireless Apple CarPlay as far as the technology front is concerned, um, which they bragged is going to be the first integration of wireless Apple CarPlay in a mainstream vehicle. As of uh, now, that's only been reserved for things like Audis and BMWs. Um, so we're finally seeing that 
come to the people um, and, and down here to mainstream yeah. vehicles. And this will be the, uh, of the things on the list, this will probably be one of the first things that you'll see uh, actually come to market. Um, still scheduled for fall, but probably early fall, unless the coronavirus has delayed it. But anyway, guys, we hope you found this video helpful about the best uh, SUVs coming to market in 2020. Um, and, you know, as always, if be sure to subscribe to the channel because we will be reviewing each and every one of these vehicles. They're very popular, so we will be reviewing them. So be sure to subscribe, and until then, be safe and happy.